Well, this is a truly fascinating take on the Florida State situation with the ACC. John Wilner from the Pac-12 Hotline suggests that this could actually speed up a process to get the old Pac-12, at least close to the old Pac-12, back in its former form. Welcome into the channel. Here on this channel, we talk conference realignment, college football, college basketball, all from a Big 12 angle. Please consider subscribing if you have not. If you're a college football fan, you will love the live shows on Wednesdays and Sundays. Really lively. Great, great group of people and community of people that are here. So make sure you're subscribed. Click the bell so you know when it is that I'm going live. Please like the video and leave a comment, whether you love me, hate me, agree, disagree. All of that stuff really helps. And if you are so inclined, you can support the channel on Venmo at john kurtz 4 Here we go. Okay, we know about Florida State and the ACC by this point, right? Florida State is suing the ACC. The ACC is suing Florida State. It's a legal battle. Florida State wants out of the grant of rights. They want to leave the conference, and if they are successful in doing this, there will surely be others that follow. It could be the end of the ACC. And John Wilner, who reports on the Pac-12 like nobody else, had a very interesting theory about what this all could mean. It started in his latest mailbag when he was asked a question about, hey, what happens to the Bay Area schools, Stanford and Cal, and then SMU if the ACC implodes or multiple big brands leave that conference? So he said this, if Florida State successfully challenges the grant of rights, then Clemson and North Carolina will as well, and perhaps Miami and Virginia too. At that point, the ACC becomes a shell of its current self. So what of the Bay Area schools? Either Stanford and Cal would be locked into a greatly depleted ACC until 2036, schlepping their teams across the country for a limited revenue and second-rate competition, or the collapse of the ACC would allow that duo and SMU to extricate themselves from the grant of rights contract. He rightfully says the former scenario would be nothing short of ghastly for the Cardinal and Bears, reflecting the immense gamble made by the leadership on each campus a few months ago. The latter scenario could lead to a reformation of the Pac-12, a development predicted by the hotline just prior to the college football playoff snubbing Florida State. We figured the process wouldn't unfold until the 2030s, but the speed of change appears to be accelerating. That's a hell of a paragraph to sneak in there. OK, so he is saying that they predicted this would all happen and you get the, the Pac-12 back in something that resembles its former form, the Pac-12 that we all know and love and that was around for decade after decade. But now he's saying the Florida State deal could actually make that come back sooner, a reformation of the Pac-12 coming back sooner. Now, he links in there his prediction from before we got the college football playoff selections of how he thought this all would play out. And it's a really clever column where he goes through and writes a fictional recap, basically, of everything that happened from the standpoint of Utah winning a Pac-12 championship in the early 2030s. And like, hey, here's how we got here with Utah back in the Pac-12. And he's basically predicting what he thinks will happen, how all of this will play out. So I've got the bullet point review here of everything that he predicts. And to be honest, it's not really that far-fetched. And he is now saying this timeline could be expedited if Florida State is successful. So the first thing that Wilner predicted was Oregon State and Washington State do the scheduling agreement with the Mountain West for two years. Then they execute a full merger with the league while keeping the Pac-12 name. And they would also keep the Mountain West commissioner as now the commissioner of the new Pac-12. And to be honest, that's kind of expected at this point. I mean, to me, that's what I expect to happen. They've given themselves the flexibility for two years here. With the scheduling agreements, I would anticipate that after that, this is the most likely scenario of what happens. It says the Pac-12 would sign a media rights deal with Fox, CBS, and Apple. And things are stable for a while until... That House case, which is the case going on in the courts right now, blows everything up. That case, if you are unfamiliar, is the re basically, the, to me, the retroactive NIL case where former athletes are saying, hey, look, you guys had all this TV revenue. We didn't have the option of NIL when we were in school before 2021. You need to pay us in this class action lawsuit retroactively for NIL that we should have earned. So he predicts the NCAA settles and schools have to pay a total of $3 billion in retroactive NIL to the plaintiffs. And moving forward, this obviously would be a huge thing, we get revenue sharing. He predicts the outcome of that case would be that 8.5% of all TV revenue has to be shared with the athletes. And now we have revenue sharing, which is something that's been talked a lot about in college athletics. Because of that, uh, he says Olympic sports will get cut, and there are regional leagues created specifically for the Olympic sports that are left, to cut down on the travel costs associated with those sports. We're already talking about that now, right? The travel costs of sending, you know, UCLA's 
women's soccer team all the way to Piscataway, New Jersey, uh, to, to play Rutgers and how much that is going to put a strain financially on athletic departments. Now, if they're having a revenue share, that's a lot more money that they're not getting that's going to the student athletes. They've got to find ways to get that money back, and it will start with cutting Olympic sports. And the ones that they have will be matched up regionally, which, what a concept. Um, Another big bomb that he predicts is the National Labor Relations Board will deem college football and basketball players to be employees. So we have revenue sharing, and now college athletes are employees which would allow athletes to collectively bargain and get extra coverage for physical and mental health, things that probably should be happening. But again, that's an extra cost. That is more cost associated with every athletic department. And so now they are under more and more strain. And you can probably see where this starts to go. Individual schools, he predicts, will start plotting basically with ESPN and Fox And Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, and USC get rid of equal revenue sharing in the Big Ten with Texas, Alabama, Georgia, and others not far behind in the SEC. So no more equal revenue sharing, no more Missouri and Vanderbilt in the SEC getting the same amount of money as Alabama, Georgia, and Texas up at the top. They're going to do away with that. And then the bigger deal as far as TV deals go and the money in the conferences go is that the Big Ten, who is first up to negotiate their TV contract in 2029, would negotiate an out clause in their deal in 2033, which is when the SEC deal is up with ESPN. They get an out clause so everybody can bail at that point, and then the TV networks can just ink deals with the specific schools that they want. And what that means is the formation of a college football Super League. Now we have no need for Indiana. We have no need for Rutgers. We have no need for any of you guys. We'll just take the schools that we want out of these Power 2 conferences. How does the Super League get formed legally and get out of Title IX restrictions and all of that? Well, they do it by bringing it out of the NCAA's purview, not something under the NCAA umbrella, which would require, drum roll please, private equity. Something Florida State is talking a lot about now to try and get out of the ACC. Private equity would help create the Super League that is now outside of the NCAA, so legally it can actually form. And that would bring everything back around to where this started, right? How the Pac-12 comes back in. The old Pac-12 basically gets reformed. Is that the former Power 5 schools that are outside of this, you know, 20 to 24-ish team Super League, the schools that don't make the cut, they would form regional conferences and start playing basically what college football was before. So you would have a Super League and then everything else would be what we knew of college football before, which obviously would not have the same money as the Super League, but it would be a less sanitized version. It would be less NFL light and more like the regionality that we used to have in college football. And he does predict that there is a market there to get a decent TV deal. It just obviously won't be the money of the Super League. And that is how Wilner predicted it would all play out. He's now saying that timeline may be expedited. I know that there is a hope for a lot of us, I think, here in Big 12 country that that scenario plays out, except we don't have the Super League. We get everybody reforming in, you know, more like the Charlie Baker plan, right? Like 50 to 60 schools that can opt in. Then you would get some sort of commissioner to govern that. But the big part of that that seems unlikely is that for all that to be something that happens and schools go back to playing regionally with no Super League, like everybody thrown in there, just hard for me to see that you would be able to do that and get like equal TV revenue sharing there or a, a formation that would work for everybody under that scenario. I don't know. We'll see, but that's kind of the apple pie in the sky hope, I think, for schools that are outside of the the power two and even just outside of that that top 20 to 24 in Super League form. But it's it's very interesting food for thought from John Wilner here on how this all plays out and how this could be sped up if the ACC is going to implode because of Florida State. So we shall see, but these are the kinds of things that you have to be thinking about long-term in realignment, and it's probably in some form or fashion where college athletics is heading right now. I'll put a link uh, in the description if you want to read the entire uh, article, you want to read this entire, because it's great. It's great. And I would highly encourage you to uh, to subscribe and, and read John Wheeler's stuff. It is, it is very, very good. Uh, please, speaking of subscribe, subscribe to the channel, like the video. What do you think of this? Do you totally disagree? Are you on board? Let me know in the comments. All of that really helps. Like the video. Uh, and you can support the channel on Venmo at john kurtz 4 Appreciate all of you guys. I'll see you at the next live show. Take care, and I will talk to you soon.